It happens every 75 minutes. The risk growing more deadly as the sun goes down. Pedestrian struck a left. A pedestrian. People versus pedestrian. Struck by a driver. There's no pull turn up. A single moment that changes lives forever. It was raining the night musician Benjamin Gates was struck by a car as he crossed the street in Southeast DC. I was hit by a vehicle that was speeding so fast they were unable to get the license plate number um, from the camera footage. The driver didn't stop, leaving Benjamin on the road with multiple injuries and a traumatic brain injury. When he woke up from a coma, all he could think about was his future. I had just dropped and started to weep because it was an extreme level of uncertainty if music would ever be able to be something that I would do again. The driver who left him for dead was never identified. But Benjamin considers himself fortunate as fatal pedestrian crashes climbed to their highest level in four decades, totaling more than 7,000 in the U.S. last year. Anybody who has been through an experience that um, is still with us, all of them, you know, we're all absolutely um, lucky. The thing is, there is technology that might have prevented this crash, giving people like Benjamin more than luck on their side. It's called Pedestrian Automatic Emergency Braking, or AEB. And just like the name, it's designed to detect people walking in front of a car and brake when the driver doesn't. But there's a big problem. While this technology works well in many vehicles during the day, it's often failing during the deadliest time for pedestrians at night. Even though they're just crash dummies, it's still hard to watch. At this test track in Central Virginia, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety tested 23 midsize cars, SUVs, and pickups equipped with pedestrian AEB. During daylight, 19 of the cars did exactly what they're designed to do, stopping when a pedestrian crossed their path. But as the sun went down, so did many vehicles' ability to see pedestrians. Only one vehicle, a 2022 Nissan Pathfinder, avoided the crash dummy in each testing scenario. It really hits you because you know that these are the types of crashes that are happening in the real world. David Ayler is vice president of active safety testing at the Institute. He invited the News 4i team to get behind the wheel to experience this technology for ourselves. Driving a 2023 Mustang Mach-E with the sun still overhead. Just keep it steady on the gas. I reluctantly kept my foot on the gas even as I got closer to the crash dummy until the moment the car's AEB took over. That's such a scary feeling. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and again, it, it happens, you know, very late and it breaks sort of as hard as it can. David got behind the wheel to show us the Mustang at night. Very difficult to make out the pedestrian. But right before impact, the Mustang did. Though the Mustang performed well, Ayler says that's not the norm. The challenge for a lot of these systems is sort of predicting what the pedestrian's gonna do. Ready down here. Another challenge is getting all AEB technology to work as well as the cars we saw tested. Right now, auto manufacturers aren't required to equip their cars with pedestrian AEB technology or even ensure it works well in all conditions. This is a solvable problem. Kathy Chase of the Advocates for Highway and Auto Safety is pushing the U.S. Department of Transportation to establish performance standards so that AEB can spot pedestrians day or night. If they can't work at the nighttime, which is when most of pedestrian fatalities happen, they shouldn't be calling it AEB with pedestrian detection. Yeah. The $1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill included a mandate for auto manufacturers to eventually equip their cars with AEB technology, but it's unclear what the performance standards will include. What we're pushing hard for is that every family and every road user deserves the safest braking system. In the meantime, the IIHS has a voluntary commitment from most auto manufacturers to include AEBs as standard equipment. How many manufacturers signed on to the voluntary commitment? Almost 100% of them. 
After months of rehabilitation, Benjamin was able to finally resume playing and performing, something he said has been crucial for his recovery. We don't always have the best of days, so sometimes it comes with, you know, being a little angry or something like that and just trying to express that through the instrument. He says he'll never know who struck him or if this technology could have made a difference. For now, he's focused on the future he almost lost. Now, it's worth noting these cars were tested at a maximum of 37 miles an hour, which is a lot slower than most of us drive. But experts tell us the hope is this technology can detect pedestrians and slow the car down to lessen the impact and save more lives. I'm Susan Hogan, News 4 I team. The I-Team asked the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration about its timeline for when automakers will be required to offer this AEB technology in all vehicles or if they will have to meet nighttime performance standards. A spokesperson told the I-Team the agency should have that guidance for automakers by next fall.